In this video, we're going to talk about the different kind of backgrounds you can use. You can import a graphic background and move it around the canvas. You can have solid backgrounds. And this is the basics of what we're going to talk about in this video. Again, file import, find an image. We're going to be working with an image background to begin with. And this is the same image that I used in the previous video. I downloaded it from unsplash.com. Here are the dimension sizes. 3,648 pixels by 5,472. If you cannot remember what your composition settings are and your size dimensions, you can just double click on your previous composition, or if you need to make a new composition, you can do that, and then go to composition settings. So my document size is 1920 by 1080. If you're in Photoshop and you want to make a background, you would set your size to 1920 by 1080 with 72 dpi. Video and anything for the web is always 72 dpi, unlike when we're designing for print, which is 300 dpi. And we'll just hit OK. So right now I'm going to drag this onto the canvas, onto my stage, onto my composition, whatever you would like to call it. And again, mentioned pivot points. If you want to move your pivot point, you can either hit Y on your keyboard or you can go up to the top here. And this is how to move your pivot point. So I'm just going to have everything centered roughly. And I also do not want this background to run for my full 45 seconds. As you notice, it did come in for the full 45 seconds. So I'm just going to put my cursor towards the end of it and I'm going to drag it back to about 10 seconds. Right now, what I want you to do is toggle down this little arrow, and then you'll get your transform controls. I'm going to toggle that down as well. But just to start off, I am going to view at about 12.5%. Make sure you have your selection tool, or V, on your keyboard for the quickie, and just move it around the canvas where you want it to first start. So I'm gonna have a first start, let's say, at the dark part almost as if it's cloudy and it's dark, it's nighttime possibly. And I am going to click on the stopwatch to create my first keyframe. Keyframes work the same in After Effects as they do in Premiere. It's always that stopwatch to start your keyframe and then thereafter you will have to hit the little diamond. So now I'm going to move over a few seconds, reposition where I want it to go and then it automatically made a keyframe. And then if I go a little bit further, I can click forward and it does that. So by moving it around the canvas, it automatically created a keyframe. But you can also just click and create a keyframe and then move it. So whatever you feel comfortable with. And then scrubbing back and forth, you'll see that it is actually moving. So let me just put this into the full view and it's starting off from the dark and going to a light. And what I notice right now is it's actually not on the canvas properly. So if I just click on this last keyframe and I'm just gonna move it over. Now if I scrub back, I can see that everything is on the canvas. Okay, now what I wanna do are add some solid backgrounds. I'm just going to collapse these down and go up to the top and hit Layer, New, Solid. Right now it's calling it a dark solid because the color swatch is a dark. If I click on red, you'll notice that it changed it up to the top as a red solid one. I am going to actually put it as a gray tone for now and hit OK. So now I have a gray solid and again working with layers it's sitting above my image background so you'll notice that I cannot see my image background anymore. I'm going to roll it from the front and from the back and possibly have it go over a little bit. So you might be thinking why am I having it going over top of my background image when I can't even see it? What I'd like to do is toggle these down and I'm going to be putting some keyframes for transparency. So right when this solid starts, I'm going to add a keyframe on my opacity. And then I'm going to scroll across and right about here, 
I'm going to add another keyframe. So I have two keyframes. The first one and the second one, you will notice, are set to 100%, which means that it is showing the full view of that gray. If I click on my first keyframe and I set my opacity to zero, it should fade in. And actually what just happened is I didn't have my keyframe properly selected, so it made another one. So I'm just gonna delete the other one. So here I have it as zero, and if I scrub across, it's going to fade into the gray. This would be a lot easier to see if I chose a brighter color. So what I'll do now is I'm going to create another solid. Layer, new, solid. And this time I'll pick a bright color. So it called itself Royal Blue Solid. If you want to rename it, you can always just highlight it and rename it, but I'm fine with that. So I'll just hit OK. Again, it came in right at the top and it covered over everything. So I'm just going to roll my edges, same way that you would do in Premiere, just rolling it back. And then I'm going to go to the beginning of this bright blue clip, collapse my other one, toggle this down, and I'm going to put an opacity keyframe. So right now, I'm going to just start it off, and at the beginning, I'm just gonna hit zero. So right now, you can't even see any of the blue. And if I scrub across, it's not there either. And at this point is when I want it to have it at 100%. So I'm going to add another keyframe and change it to 100%. So if I go to the beginning and I scrub across slowly, you'll see that it is fading in to 100% solid. So now if I minimize all of this, you will see as I scrub back, I have my first image and then it goes into an opacity and full view of the gray and then another opaque blue and now it is in the full color of the blue. So that is how you add backgrounds. If you want, you can hit U on your keyboard when you have it selected and it tells you what are the used commands right now. So on the first one, I have my opacity. My second one, there's an opacity and the third one, there is a position. The last thing I want to talk about is working with your layers. As I previously discussed, your layers work the same as they do in Photoshop. So if you wanted to move, let's say, your original image background to the top, all you do is you click and hold, and when you see that blue line, you let go. So it has changed the way my composition works. Because this one had a solid ending, you will see that there are no more opacity transitions and fade outs.